A farm worker brutally killed and allegedly mistaken for a warthog, Jan Railo, died at the hands of Stephen Hepburn. A hunter was denied bail today. We ask, is this a case of mistaken killing or was this a deliberate cold-blooded murder? Joining us is Maria Sutoid from Dutoid and Associates. And uh, we have Chris Malimaja. He's the provincial chair of Sanko. As always, the lines are open for you on 011-542-2186. Or you can tweet at ANN7TV. Gentlemen, good evening to you. Good evening. Good evening. And Thanks so much for joining us. Mudimola, of course, is very notorious for these kind of incidents. Mm. Uh, and yet it's very difficult to pin it down to uh, being a racial, um, or deliberate racial attacks. W what is your view in this case, Marius, that, you know, a, a sound-minded person of reasonable mind, would mm. they mistake uh, a grown man for a war talk? You know, firstly, one must say, Cindy, that any killing like this, it's one too many. Whoever the victim is, it's one too many. And, and it seems in South Africa that more often than not, we have incidents on farms that, that go wrong, where either an employee or either a farmer or a farm worker, for whatever reason, is being murdered. And in this instance, you have to say and have to ask, how did it happen that he actually mis mistook this person for a warthog? I mean, there's no correlation between any person and a warthog, so that means either it was too dark for him to have seen, in which event he was reckless, and if he did foresee that it could be a human and he discharged a shot and he reconciled his actions with it, that's murder. If, however, he should have seen, he should have taken steps, reasonable steps, which he didn't take, you're talking about carpal homicide. All right, so that's the Schedule 5 and uh, Schedule 6 differentiation in terms of uh, premeditated murder or that of neglect. Yes, I think we must remember that when you when you deal with premeditated murder, you're saying that a person had time to reconsider his actions and he then decides after realizing he could, do a, uh, he could kill the person, he then goes and decides, I'm not going to shoot you five times or six times. And that could, in the circumstances, you know, it shows a deliberate action on my part planning to kill you. Mm. When you and that would be Schedule 6. When you deal with Schedule 5, you're specifically saying that it's just plain murder, whether it was as a result of a drinking incident, whether it's just shooting recklessly, that's just plain murder. Mm. And when you deal with corporal homicide, that would fall under Schedule 1 or Schedule 7, depending on the circumstances, but usually not an issue with regards to bail. Schedule 5 and 6 could be issues with regard to bail. Yeah. Uh, Chris, I mean, the community obviously are being very incensed with this, uh, with this case, citing similar incidences where there were mistaken killings. Uh, others even saying this entrenches the structural racism in that place because a black life doesn't seem to matter as much as what they call the uh, commercial farmers' lives. Thanks, man. I think it's high time that we must really say to people out there that life is not cheap. Mm -hmm. It has became a norm that each and every certain period, people are killed, and when we go deeper into the matter, such explanation will come. I've mistaken a person to be a baboon. I've mistaken a person to be a wolf. I've mistaken a person to be a pig. Not so long we had a very similar case where a human being was taken into the lion's den just to feed. That on its own it can tell so that people really enjoy this freedom in a very different way. Mm -hmm. I think as a community we are hardly touched by all these things, but we are saying we don't think the law is really taking its course to the latter. Because in such cases, before we even talk about case, as the South African National Civic Organization will be saying, this case deserves to just go straight to the judgment, rather to be plain in terms of bail, no bail. I don't agree and I'll never agree with the issue of Schedule 6. There's no way. This person knew very well that what you want to do. There's no way that you are there at the hunting area, you mistake a person to be an animal. Then at the end of the day, we come and say, no, that's fine. Then this person can be given one to do in a belief of doubt. Yeah. What does a, a reasonable person ought to do, even if you're invited to a friend's farm, in this case with uh, Mr. Hepburn, uh, in, in considering that there would be other people on the premises, farm workers, uh, you know, you need to take some level of caution. Any, any you... person utilizing a firearm must take extraordinary measures to make sure that when he discharges a firearm, he doesn't endanger any person or livestock or anything like that, unless it's, of course, there to hunt a, a wild animal. But he is specifically to take precautions. So if, for argument's sake, I go and hunt on a farm, and I know that there are people frequenting the farm, I must make absolutely sure that when I discharge my gun, and I must take all reasonable steps necessary in the circumstances to ensure that I'm not killing a person. And I think there's something else in this matter as well. Exactly. You know, the moment we deal with a matter where 
it seems to the public out there that we are, are putting a value than less than 10 on a person. Instance where we, we, we say that this person is compared to a warthog or this person is compared to a baboon or whatever the case may be. The moment that it does, the moment that happens, it invokes emotion and immediately stirs incitement in the, in, the, in the eyes of the public that, listen, we are dealing here with a racist incident. Even though this might be absolutely innocent, even though we might deal here with a person that honestly believed that he was going to hunt warthogs, he heard a noise and he just just told just a shot in that direction without even seeing that there was a person. But even so, how do you discharge a firearm in a direction where you hear a noise without knowing what you're shooting? I mean, that in itself shows at the very least we're dealing with corporal homicide. We'll take callers on 011-542-2186. Uh, Margaret, you're calling us from Durban. Thanks so much. Good evening to you. What's your question or comment? I think that um, I don't think the guy's got a good enough excuse to have shot that guy, that innocent chap, because they said it's been shot in the chest. So he must have been upright. But I also agree with that, the other gentleman that spoke about all the guns and that, the, I mean, this year already, 17 farmers have been shot. And in a way, you know, you don't know, probably there was black farmers and white farmers, but it's also something that needs serious, serious attention. Margaret, thanks so much for that call in the sense that, you know, uh, we, any, any f uh, form of violence cannot be condoned. Um, and, but in, in a racially polarized society, we can't help but, you know, reflect on it as a case, uh, as the community would feel. They, yeah. they live this every day. So we can't explicitly or implicitly say that, you know, one life is better than the other. Um, and, and having said so, though, how do we reconcile this community, Chris, especially if they already feel that the law prejudices uh, black people or uh, black farm workers? You see, I think let me take this one minute to indicate something that I think it will keep calm. What are the regulations of that particular area in terms of the, fanti I mean, the hunting regulation? Because if perhaps there was a proper regulation and monitoring, a person would have not been there well as they're doing the hunting activity. I'm saying that on its own is another issue that must be looked upon. Then, then the issue here is, if time and again certain race, I mean certain race seem to be enjoying this thing of that killing and they walk away with murder. I don't think it will be easy to unify South Africa, will be easy to achieve a non-racial. It is high time that this issue of guns, and if you check, it is on one side, this issue of guns, it's highly regulated and it be really monitored in a way that no one must just have a gun, two minutes goes to hunting, you go to a very same hunting place, it's like it's not regulated, people can be in, animals can be in. Mm. I fully agree with you, Marias, that you can't just shoot randomly. I'm fully convinced that it is the intention of this thing. And to reconcile, it will need time. Because people need to be workshop and understanding. And, but it's high time that in South Africa, we really understand where from dark face can we be in a light face and accept one another, not play with the lives of individuals. Okay, let's take another caller. Jason, thanks for your patience. Good evening to you. Good evening, ma'am, and good evening to your panel. Yes, sir. What's yes. your question or, qu or comment? Ma'am, first of all, I'd like to indicate your representative from Sanco. Uh, I, I don't know why, when a person is killed, and if it's black on white or white on black, whatever, why is there so much politicization of everything? Murder is murder. It doesn't matter who it is. A white farmer is killed. There is no politics involved in there. The ANC doesn't come out uh, chanting slogans and so forth. Neither do you get the EFF or the DA. A black life is taken. The whole of South Africa explodes. We are all equal before the law. We have a constitution. The fact of the matter is life has become in South Africa. The people that we should be we standing up to is to the lawmakers, legislature, and the criminal justice system. Those are the people that are failing us. And those are the people should be dealt with. And I think ANN, uh, you, you, on a whole, you politicize things a bit too much. Thank you, ma'am. All right, Jason, thanks so much for your call. We have Michael uh, on the line. Hi, Michael. Hello, it's not Michael, it's Martin. Oh, Martin, I beg your pardon. Good evening. Good evening, madam. How are you? I'm well, thank you. What's your comment or question? Yeah, no, I'm just going to make a comment that uh, there are designated areas where people must hunt. And if you go and hunt where people are supposed to be working, 
that's murder. So it's murder, nothing else. Thank you. All right, much appreciated. Let's just deal. I'm not even going to entertain the, uh, the polit politicizing things uh, too much because we're in that uh, political no, this, environment. Exactly. Uh, it's what is happening. You, you know, and, no and, and I, need, I think we need to confront panel. issues for, for what they are. Exactly. As much as I appreciate uh, Jason saying murder is murder and, and all lives count, but we cannot ignore the power dynamics in this country. I mean, the case in point would be the cage lady in the back of a bucky. Yes. Where, where, where even the benevolent uh, farmers would say, no, 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 you know, it's okay to call him bus mm -hmm. and we continue. But I, I, I digress. Let's just deal with the, the issue of the regulations and the demarcated areas of where one would hunt and whether this case would be uh, one of those that uh, flaunted, flaunted the law. You can hunt on any farm provided it's safe to do so. You know, when a person is given a license to hunt, that person, of course, must exercise his, his authority to use the gun in conjunction with the Firearms Control Act. And that indicates that you can, under your control, if you've been found competent to, to use a firearm, specifically a hunting rifle, then you can have people under your control to use it. And hence you could have a person that's 16 years old that could use a gun under your supervision on your farm. But one has to say immediately that there is a massive onus on any person using a hunting rifle. Keeping in mind that these are high velocity um, you know, projectiles that are fired, that travel very far. When you have that on a farm, you have to make absolutely sure that it's safe to do so. And if you don't do that, and I agree with Chris, you know, not, not enough is done to police this. Mm. But I think the difficulty is we must understand that we have such a crime-ridden society that we simply don't have enough police officers to police it. You know, even though we might have the most noblest of legislation in place, the fact that we simply don't have people to police it, unfortunately, is a reality. And hence, you only reactionary, on a reactionary basis, deal with this. Whenever there's a problem, when somebody is killed, you suddenly deal with that situation as a, on an ad hoc basis. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, ventilate the other one. Jason again saying that uh, when there's white farmers killed, we don't see, uh, it doesn't make headlines. The DA and civic organizations like yourself do not uh, scream out in horror and gasp. That is not true. He must not contradict himself. You know, his last statement tells all that really life is life. As the South African National Civic Organization, our membership cut across. We are not and will never ever allow a situation where any race can kill, then it will be go away with the matter. <clears throat> Even if it can be blacks in a form of mob, will not allow that to kill any white people. We are saying life matters. So to say when things happen, then we come and say we politicize, that is not correct. Remember, in this case, there's nothing wrong for all political parties to go and chant and say no bail to this man. Equals to a place where if a white person has been killed by a black man, we are saying that is not supposed to happen mm. in this country. Chris, let's take a call. Edward and Rabia Ridge, hello to you. Good evening. Hello there. Hi. What's uh, your, how, your perspective? How are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm okay. You know, uh, this, thing that, uh, this thing is happening in our country is very disastrous. Because of, you know, I'm a self-employer. And then I'm, I'm going all over in, uh, the farmers and whatever you need anyway. Uh, the way they treat us as a people, like as a black, you really show, they really show us that they don't want us. Because of, they can tell you that I don't hire baboon. I don't hire, they call us with names. So, I mean, if, if, the, if the thing is going like that, really, 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 I don't know. I don't know what can happen to Because of that thing, Japanese is dead. Edward, uh, thanks for that, saying that uh, black farmers in general are denigrated and treated inhumanely. Uh, let's uh, take a call, Amanto in Mahikeng. Good uh, evening to you. Manto? Hello? Hi. Oh, I'm poor. I beg your pardon. Good evening to you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Fine. Thanks, Philippe and your panel. I just want to comment here. Yeah? Yes, sir. This is fine. Paul, just please turn down your TV set. It's giving us feedback. Uh, while, while we, yeah, let's just get a reaction from our panelists so far in how this uh, needs to be nipped in the bud because it, it could also be a case of retaliation when it comes to farm killings based on the, the interaction between farm workers and Absolutely. employers. Yeah, I, th I think you know, when the authorities act in, in these matters, they should act decisively. 
and the courts should make it very clear that this will not be tolerated. And, and let's just agree with some of the callers, you know, whether irrespective of the race of the victim or irrespective of the race of the suspect, you know, unfortunately we live in a polarized society, but no life is less valued than any, any other race's life. And as a result, you know, we cannot condone something like this, and we never will. But therefore, it is required that our authorities act decisively whenever they, they have a matter like this to ensure, and of course, to instill confidence in the public as a whole to see, well, we act swiftly when we have matters like this. Yeah, but it's difficult to police a private uh, residence, or in this case, the farm, mm. uh, and you would rely on key witnesses to give accurate and truthful uh, information or de deposition, so it depends now on the lady who was present, whether she can say uh, if, if Mr. Relo was upstanding at the time of the shot, uh, whether he was in clear sight, or you know whether it was really a mistaken uh, killing an identity. And of course, you'd also depend on ballistic evidence, because ballistic evidence will show you the trajectory when the person was shot, in what yes. position was he at the time when he was struck. I remember when I was still prosecuting the Northern Cape, we had a matter where a farm worker killed a stock thief. And the, the trajectory of the, the projectile determined his guilt at the end of the day. So the ballistic evidence in this matter will be of critical importance in the prosecution of this matter. But you're absolutely right. The witnesses in this matter, if any, will also play a massive role. And in this instance, you might find that the only witness, unfortunately, is silent mm. because it, it is the deceased. Yeah. I mean, one of the callers make, makes the observation that somehow we tend to uh, paint a particular group as being victims and uh, that in this case, you know, it could be an innocent mistake or it could have been a mistaken identity. Chris, you don't seem to be sold on that because if we're going to take a stance that says uh, white people generally are known to be virtuous, you know, that this guy mm. is innocent until proven guilty, can we also say that the converse is true for, for any black person that commits the crime? Do you think the law is balanced in that sense or how we interpret it? No, I think let's take this opportunity to date you back to say 1994 coming this side, we have been so vocal condemning the killing of the farmers. And even today we still say no one has got the right to take one's life. Including the farmers, no one has got the right to go and kill them. And that is our stand. We are saying even in this case, let me also clarify the issue of policing the private sector, I mean the private area. How do they happen to manage to get the license if they cannot look upon their own property? I think that must be a key issue to address. Because once you are given that particular authority and say, this is yours, you must ensure that at this time until this time, no person inside, no person outside. If there is a shooting activity, it must have been thoroughly checked to ensure that we avoid all these things. And I want those callers, whoever way it is, let's not divert the issue. In this case, it's not a white person who is dead. And I'm saying if tomorrow is a white person killed this very thing, I will stand on the same platform and condemn that particular shit. Mm. I'm not saying white in general, they are going out to mm. shoot everybody. No, we are saying this man is a white person, he's a farmer, he has killed a black person. It is a case on his own. And I agree with you. And you're saying that's a racist attack? Yeah, it's a racist attack. All right, um, Paul in, uh, or rather Lawrence, hello, good evening to you. We'll get your response in a bit, Marius. Hello, Lawrence. Hello, ma'am, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Now, I just want to ask a question. There's something that I don't understand. They said this guy is a hunter. If you are a hunter, I believe, you must distinguish between an animal and a human being. And he shot this guy, he was standing, he shot him in the chest, and he said he was whatever you think it is, and promised to do it. You can't say, we, we, can't, we can't say it's a homicide, what, what, or it didn't kill him purposely. I believe that is a straight, straight murder that he did. Because if you are a hunter, you have to diminish the animals that you, are, you have to shoot on the field. All right, thanks so much, Lawrence. Just uh, very quickly, whether you feel it's a racist, uh, I mean, obviously the court is here to prove the difficulty in this matter will always be, Cindy, that you don't, have, you don't have evidence to support that. You will have the only person that could speak here is, of course, the accused, and you have the fact that he reported it to a police station. You have, unfortunately, the deceased is silent. So all you would have in this matter is ballistic evidence. So depending on the version that was forwarded to the police officer at the time when you reported the matter, 
coupled with ballistic evidence, will dictate if the, the, the farm, farmer or the, or the hunter is in fact speaking the truth. But the difficulty that you have here, unless you have surrounding evidence from other farm workers saying that, listen, this person is absolutely a racist, he's threatened this deceased many times, he told him in the past that if you come on my farm, I will shoot you. Unless you have evidence like that available, you will have very much, or you have great difficulty in proving that this is a racially motivated murder. What about culpability for the farm owner? Because this happens to be a guest on his farm who has now committed this crime. Well, when you deal with civil liability, one must firstly understand that they, we are looking at a delict. And when you have a delict, if it was negligently caused, that's sufficient in order for the hunter to run up liability for a, a so-called loss of support claim for the dependents of the deceased. If that person was acting at the behest of the farm owner, then of course the farm owner could be vicariously liable. But it would depend on, on each and separate uh, set of facts as to whether the farm owner in this matter actually attracts liability. If he knew that there's no way that hunting could be allowed on my farm because of, I'm like I have a residential uh, estate, right, or a residential um, town right next to my, my property, and he allows hunting to take place, then you can argue that, listen, he is negligent in himself in allowing hunting to take place. But it would be a separate investigation to determine whether there's vicarious liability on the, far, on the part of the farm owner as such. All right. And uh, Sanko, what are you going to do uh, in terms of, I suppose, support on uh, both sides? Mr. Hepburn deserves his day in court uh, and for, for the law to take its course. But uh, there's also the Railos family. Thanks, man. I think from where we are standing this morning, we have been ensuring that we mobilize our structures to ensure that we peg the whole court to capacity. We are not going to allow that person to be given a bail. I never in my life saw a author of the women's right. There's no way that we can mistook to be youth, then shoot a person on chest. In South Africa, we don't have this hole. We have them at that size. We are definitely sure this was intentionally done, and therefore this man doesn't deserve to be walking freely, whereas he's done such a miserable thing that is taking us back to the apartheid system. All right, we're going to have to leave it there, gentlemen. Always appreciate it. Thank Thanks you, for your time. Chris Malimaja is the provincial chairperson of Sanko. Maurice Dutoy is uh, an a lawyer with uh, Dutoy and Associations. Uh, thanks so much uh, to you at home that took the trouble to call in as well. We'll take a quick head break and see you shortly. Thank you. Thank you.